and protect it. That is what we honor tonight, and through the efforts of our celebrated music director, Lana, we will once more experience the spiritual bond that enhances our ability to reach new heights and our desire to receive God's blessings through music. <coughs> we begin the service with the Sabbath prayer presented to us by the choir. Yeah, 
Lord and command us to kindle the lights of Shabbat. May we be blessed with Shabbat joy. Amen. May we be blessed with Shabbat peace. Amen. May we be blessed with Shabbat light. Amen. Well, tonight's a special occasion, so I'll give you a special kiss. <laughs> and you get a special, special kiss. <laughs> Continues with the Lachad Odi, the Cantor in the Choir, page 46. Thank you. 
us from far wish, away. I wish perfectly. <laughs> Welcome home. Thank you. Yeah. We turn now to page 50. In the middle of the page, the affirmation of our faith. Thank you. 
was written by Miriam as she watched the children of Israel cross the sea into safety. And now we concentrate on the admonition given to us by God regarding the Sabbath. On page 55, the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath in every generation as a covenant for all time. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel, for in six days the Eternal One made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day God rested and was refreshed. Shalom. Now turn to page 56. The Amida. Traditionally it is recited standing, but if you wish to remain seated, that's okay. Page 56 will start with the cantor rendering the Tefillah.
introduction, let us think about those we know, those who are familiar to us, who have illnesses that need a little help in getting well again. Between us and God, we send our prayers to all of them that they have a complete refuah shlema. So call out the names, and we will have them in our hearts and minds when we sing the Mishmerach prayer. <laughs> And all these people are in our minds and in our hearts. And we wish them all a speedy recovery. And let us now emphasize that with the singing of the Mishvera prayer, which you will find on the inside cover of your prayer book. Let us all sing it together explaining to each other and to God the need for everyone to receive healing.
ask you to inspire us through your teachings and commandments to love and uphold our precious democracy. Let every citizen take responsibility for the rights and freedoms we cherish. Let each of us be an advocate for justice, an activist for liberty, a defender of dignity, and let us champion the values that make our nation a haven for the persecuted, a beacon of hope among the nations. We pray for courage and conscience as we aim to support our country's highest values and aspirations, the hard-worn rights that define us as a people, the responsibilities that they entail. We pray for all who serve our country with selfless devotion in peace and in war, from fields of battle to clinics and classrooms, from government to the grassroots, all those whose noble deeds and sacrifice benefit our nation and the world. We are grateful for the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that our founders attributed to you, our creator. We pray for their wisdom and moral strength, that we may guardians of these rights for ourselves and for the sake of all people, now and forever. And let us say, Amen. Amen.
because it's a very valuable lesson. The main theme of this particular portion of the Torah is the golden calf. I'm sure we're all familiar with the story of the golden calf. Moses goes up to the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Meanwhile, the people below the mountain are concerned. What happened to Moses? Did he die? Was he killed? Did he fall and hurt himself? Did, nobody knew what to expect and there was no forewarning of things that were going to be coming. And so the people rebelled. And they started to question, why are they there? Why are they not back in Egypt where they may not have been happy and they may have been slaves, but they had meals to eat and a roof over their heads? Why? Did they have to come here to die in the desert? And they tried to show that God was a visible thing. They were not accustomed to the concept of an invisible God because they came from a society that worshiped idols. You look throughout Egyptian history, and you see that they had different idols for different parts of worship. Their temples were dedicated to particular idols. So the concept of not seeing God was foreign to begin with. And now, of course, doubt set in, and there was going to be rebellion. And just when the rebellion started, when Korah con convinced the people to build a God, to build a golden calf, and that will be our God, and that will go in front of us wherever we go, and we will worship the golden calf. Well, when Moses came down, needless to say, all hell broke loose. <laughs> From that time forward, we remember the books that were given to us by Moses, the Ten Commandments, contain one particular command that said, you shall not make graven images, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. No exception to the rule, that's the rule. But we learn a very valuable lesson from the golden calf. Sometimes we lose faith. Sometimes we feel despair. Nobody's listening to us. There's nobody to talk to. Where is God in all the turmoil that we see in the world, all the tumult that's in the world? Golden calf should teach us that we don't need something tangible to give us hope and the ability to believe. What we need is our hearts and our minds to concentrate on the difficulties we're going through so that we can find answers to those miserable episodes that we experience. That's why we don't worship this ark, people will ask me, why do we have an ark? Why do we have Torahs in it? Why do we bow to it? Why do we kiss it when we walk around? Not because it's an idol, not because it represents a golden calf, not because it represents something that we pray to. We adhere to what it says in there and we believe in the sanctity of the words that are in there. That's why we all show reverence to the Torah. The ark where it's housed is a symbol of the ark of the covenant that was carried throughout the wilderness until the people reached 
the promised land. Pay attention to the words, the words of the wind, the ones, the things that will give us hope and faith and belief that there is salvation. For the first honor, we call Shoshana Bat Avraham and Hannah Bat Avraham. Jill and Becca Redman.
the third Aliyah. I lost the name somewhere, so you'll forgive me. But I have the, the Yosef Chaim Ben Yitzchak and Jerry, I'm sorry, I've lost your name that was given to me. Jerry and Jim Gold. <laughs> Well, actually, in the cloud. That's right, in the cloud. Not 
Page 146, let us please understand it. Okay. <laughs> Some rely on the support of many to reach the, attain the attainable, which at times sometimes feels to be unreachable. Some prefer an effort of endurance that can make us stronger, not only in body, but in mind and spirit. So yoga or going to the gym, those kinds of things give us perhaps endurance and will make us stronger. All these attempts at fulfillment are designed to make us better and even more better. There have been many occasions, for example, where I have encountered such people. Some have been scholars for the benefit of, of humanity's struggle for purpose. Some have been devotees of spirituality, enhancing our consciousness. Some have been athletes attempting to create a physical connection to our endurance. It takes all kinds to make a world. I have been amazed at the strength required for all these accomplishments. It is more than strength, it is the ability to create a path toward our real potential. That's why we do all these things, not only for longevity, but to make us feel that we have accomplished something. Does anyone really understand 
what motivates people to search for all these different paths. To me, it is the willingness to immortalize the ability of the human spirit. That is the crux of it all. Our congregation also is blessed with such people. For example, in our congregation, whether retired or not, there are doctors of medicine, philosophy, and science. Found in our midst are nurses, teachers, and musicians. We can boast of spiritualists and entrepreneurs. There are individuals who devote their energies to the uplifting of the fallen, legions of volunteers to engage our citizens in the responsibility we have toward life's enjoyment. We are a conglomerate of all that. While it is true that as hard as we try, we will never satisfy everyone, nor answer all the calls we receive to eliminate anger and frustration or loneliness and despair. Still we know that we can be there when needed because we care and we share. But most of all, we are a congregation that extends itself person by person to assist in this journey we embarked upon at birth. Such a person I've encountered, and all of us have been privileged to know, is Lana Boyer. We honor her tonight. She answered the call at a time when our congregation was searching for a more meaningful experience with new ideas, steadfastness that would give stability. She brought organization and a new group of volunteers, eager and enthusiastic. Most of them are still here. <laughs> we have a few new faces, but most of them are the people she brought with her. Above all, she understood that we are an obligation and we are obligated to try new approaches and new ideas even when they will not succeed. Being a volunteer is truly a thankless job. I can look out and see all the volunteers that are here, how many times have people gone up to you and say thank you. However, I do believe that volunteers such as Lana accept responsibility with no expectation of reward. Accolades are delivered, perhaps even a gift or two, but we can never sufficiently offer the proper appreciation because all who toil in the vineyard of spiritual awareness know that the reward is the satisfaction felt because of all the accomplishments. As a rabbi, as your rabbi, I encourage all of you to cheer Lanner and her illustrious choir so that they know how proud we truly are. More than that, however, let us take pride in knowing that we, as a congregation, help nurture her in difficult times as well as happy times. I too have been uplifted by her willingness to answer the call for the betterment of all. So dear Lana, God continue to bless you as we have been blessed by your presence and your talent and your benevolence. Amen. Amen. And now I'm going to ask Len Golan to express some words in regard to the choir.
It's coming. Here's your stuff. I'm here on behalf of the choir and the congregation. I'd like to say a few words. What makes a congregation? We have two wonderful spiritual leaders in our beloved Rabbi Wiener and the wonderful voice, Cantoroni. We have a beautiful and inspiring and successful choir led by Van Oyer. We have officers and a board that keeps the congregation running smoothly. And of course, we have our community of members that keeps all of us motivated to do more and more. Through all your contributions, we are a strong and successful congregation. As we approach the Passover holiday, Tonight is a good night to ask the age-old question, why is tonight different than all other nights? <laughs> because tonight, we want to highlight the efforts of an individual who for more than 30 years of volunteering has been a strong <laughs> thread in the fabric of our congregation, our choir director, Lana Hoyer. As choir director and member of the congregation, Lana has been on this BEMA a very, very long time. In fact, she is one of about three congregants that have been here since 1991. Wow. In 1991, Lana started as a choir member, and within six months, she became the director. She took over a choir with only six vocals, and over the years, grew the choir to more than 35. Over the years, Lana has sung with the Phoenix Symphony Chorus, and has traveled to conventions and other venues to find, to find new songs and different ways to engage our prayers through music. When needed, she works with our new accompanists to help them feel and appreciate the rhythm of our Jewish heritage expressed in song. Combining the rich tones of the organ and the piano with the sweet voices of the choir, she pulls the right strings to bring us together to sing in harmony and as one. Besides being a number one choir director, this is a lady who says yes to everything, who asks for help. She is a fantastic friend to all and is a pillar in our community who gives 100% of her time and talents as a volunteer. <coughs> we are so lucky that it was the birth of her first grandchild, Jason, that brought her to the sunlight. <laughs> and it is a testament to her talent and appreciation of who she is that so many of our numerous community friends are with us tonight. Also, Many family members have traveled from Dallas, Denver, Pennsylvania, Las Vegas to be here tonight. Lana, come here. <laughs> On behalf of the congregation and your friends in the choir, Thank you, Anna, for the good years you have given us and for the good years yet to come. It is my honor to present you with a gift card to your favorite clothing store. <laughs> and these flowers that are sitting behind me, which is a small token to express our heartfelt appreciation for all you have done and to celebrate the 30 years of song and joy that you have brought us to our hearts. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
home, home state, not me, but Army of Ohio. And first thing she asked, can you sing? <laughs> well, I said, sure, I can sing. And Arnie said, no, you can't. <laughs> he said, you just hum, Shelby. You just hum. Alana said, oh, sure you can. You can go up there. I said, no, Alana, I'm tone deaf. I really can't. I think I can carry a tune. I'm sure a lot of you feel that way when you're in the shower or whatever. You're singing away or you're in the car with the radio and you're singing along. I think I sing great until somebody says, please close your mouth or sing. Lana, we've been friends for a long time. We have had some wonderful times together. We have Prescott now together which is wonderful. Um, it is just a tribute to have your grandchildren here and your daughters, which is just absolutely phenomenal. And your friends that you have made through the, through the chorale and through choir. And you have made this choir, you have made this, these services, as I've said before, a pleasure to come to. It just, you sing our prayers and you, they sing it beautifully and they always are wonderful. And we thank you and it's under your direction this has happened. We love you and thank you so much. Thank you to the congregation for allowing me and having faith in me to be your volunteer choir director. I have just enjoyed it immensely over the past 30 years. Most of all, thank you to the choir members and our extra singers, and you know who you are, for all their long hours of rehearsal and for their dedication all these years. You don't know what I do with it. I mean, I couldn't be without you guys, really. <laughs> Many thanks to Shay returning for this video. And thank you, Jeanette, for joining our choir and becoming our new pianist and organist. We really appreciate you. And actually, Jeanette, it's not an easy task learning all our music. Wait for the high holidays. She won't believe how much music we have. <laughs> also, it's, um, well, I already said, it's so nice to have Shay back. And uh, also, I enjoyed the clarinet. It made everybody smile tonight, didn't it? The clarinet. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Back there. Okay. <laughs> uh, most of all, thank you to my family and friends for being here to help me celebrate tonight. And um, I have a few things I'd like to s express with you, a few words. I am who I am thanks to music. I am who I am thanks to my music teachers. I am who I am thanks to learning instruments. I am who I am thanks to playing in orchestras and singing in choirs. I am who I am thanks to the amazing people I've met through music. I am who I am thanks to music.
course, everyone will participate in the Yom Shabbat afterwards, in which there are special recognitions for Lana as well. And now we're going to ask all those who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, if you'd like to come forward for your blessing. All birthdays and anniversaries or special occasions of any kind. And our anniversaries, Michael and Helen Bernstein Abrams, Joyce and Bob, Bob Dickman, Elliot and Barbara Reese, Richard and Susan Tauber, Rabbi and Sandy Weiner, Larry and Suzanne Blumper. Happy anniversary. And for our birthdays, well, Susan has a double whammy here, birthday and anniversary. Michael Free, Ruth Lieberman, Art Sharp, Murray Siegel, Laura Blumberg, Marty Winter, Harvey Schwartz, Ellie Traptenberg, who came here from Pennsylvania, Shirley Chalette, Diane Mendelson, Lee Ross, Barry Berger, Helene Zimmerman, Carolyn Brace, Jim Gold, Lucy Geller, Jerry Kaplan, Sheldon Zimmerman, and the one and only Robert Bob Stone. Happy birthday and happy birthday. I'm very glad that you all came here tonight to celebrate your milestone, the birthdays and anniversaries and anniversary. Birthday. Both? <laughs> Double header. Birthday. Birthday. Anniversary. Anniversary. I think so. Birthday. Anniversary. That's great. I'm glad all of you came here. I know that um, we're all excited to have you with us, and we hope that there'll be many more years of celebrations, not only in your homes and with your families but also with your extended family here in this congregation. And to give the blessings that you deserve, we ask the Cantor and Choir to do the Shekhyonu prayer, thanking God for all the blessings we receive. many more vile stones in your lives. Amen. Thank you.
busy weekend. We started out tonight with this wonderful service. Tomorrow we're going to see 42nd Street. Thank you, Marcia and Shelley. And on Sunday, for those of you that are single, we are having our meeting with the Havara High, which we are restarting. And it's the home of Diane Zellinger. It will be at 2 o'clock at her lovely home. I hope those of you that are single, if you have not let us know, please just come. And it's not a dating service. It's not. We want to just do fun things together. Okay. Sisterhood. I have a nice presentation here. Since its inception, in 1986, the women of Sun Lake's Jewish Congregation Sisterhood had raised and donated tens of thousands of dollars to both Jewish and non-denominational charities in the area, with much of that going to help support our congregation. Their major fundraising event is coming up on Monday, March 27th. This consists of a luncheon, fashion show, boutique shopping, their famous and fabulous gift baskets, I won four last year, never won one in my life, <laughs> as well as their raffle and their phenomenal bake sale, which includes only homemade items lovingly made by amazing bakers at a, a true bargain price. Chompy's selling a box of cookies for $40. We can guarantee they are not as good as those made by our own baking wizards, at a fraction of the cost, and a note of these, bak these bakers will accept orders throughout the year with payment going to Sisterhood. There are still a few more days to register for this gala. If you are not planning on attending, we hope you might reconsider and be a part of this fun and worthwhile event. And for the gentlemen, while fashion show may not be high on your list of activities, you can still support Sisterhood and the congregation. Stop by the Oakwood Clubhouse on the 27th, purchase some goodies, buy some raffle tickets. There are a number of baskets that are sure <coughs> to interest you, golf, <coughs> restaurants, movies, and, well, here it says that, right. A, you will move a, lot, a movie basket with gift cards to local theaters, a golf package, model cars, wine and alcohol, and many, which include gift cards to local restaurants. See, I should have read what that said. <laughs> the bottom line is this. The more successful sisterhood is, the more support we can provide, and they do it very well to our congregation. They donated to us last year $8,500. So let's keep that going. For the information on this big event, contact Carol Bialis. And also look at your spiel. Okay. I want to thank Linda Brooks for arranging our, our fundraising at Chompies. We had over 60 people that attended. Linda's not here. Thank you, Linda. She's homesick. And to all of you that attended, I really appreciate it. <coughs> Another thank you goes to Barbara Gans, who organized, along with Michael Cohen, and co-sponsorship of the East Valley JCC, the adult education that we just had this past Sunday. We all learned about Elvis and his Jewish roots, and it was very interesting. Dr. Dan Fellner, whose parents were members of this congregation years ago. The next thing I want to plead to you is our Seder, which is going to be April 6th. If we don't have enough people that come, we will again have to cancel it. I hope that this doesn't happen. Please read your spiel, see what you need to do, and please make this happen. As always, a thank you to our wonderful rabbi, our delightful cantor, to Lana, the choir, and the guest members of the choir that were here who helped make this special. Again, to Lana's family for coming. Yvonne, I love you. You're great. Doug, he never hears me, but he sets this up. Thank you, Doug. The Rangers, please again thank them. 
And to Roxy, when you go over to the Omni, please thank them. It's been a wonderful service. Please return your books. Join us for the Omni. Shabbat Shalom and stay safe going home. Okay, that was not a dismissal. <laughs> we have to finish up the service. So we'll turn to page 165 for the Kiddush. <clears throat> short <Shortbird. laughs>
infinite God, eternal spirit of the universe, we ask you to grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to all who have perished needlessly during these past weeks, who have entered now eternity. O God of mercy, let them all find refuge in your eternal presence, and let their souls be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God surely is their inheritance. May they all rest in peace, and let us say, Amen. Amen. Page 153. However brief may our time on earth, O oh God, who endow our fleeting days with abiding work, we now recall the loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, Mesh Levitin, Seymour Zolte, and her love. And as we remember those who died at this season in years past, we take them into our hearts with our own. In this moment of memory, our griefs and sympathies are mingled. Loving God, we praise your name. We also want to remember at this time Michael Weiner and Lyman Davis. May their memories be for a blessing. And we commemorate at this time of the year the following, Herman Alter, Mars Berenweig, Harry Bernstein, Sheldon Bialis, Marsha Brown, Joseph Bright, Jack Cohn, Louis Cohn, Diana Cohn, Samuel Dolins, George Dolinsky, Rosetta Dolinsky, Celia Eisenman, Lena Fisher, Louis Friedman, Lily Friedman, Max Geffner, Iman Ginsberg, Ida Goldberg, Norman Goldstein, Barbara Goldstein, Trout, Trouty Golan, Dan Gurian, Fran Hassenfuss, Sarah Jacobson, Sidney Klein, Henry Kolb, Andrew Krauss, Gertrude Kaplan, Doris Levy, Isabel Levy, Walter Levy, Rachel, Rachel Milgram, Libby Mossberg, Gail Moss, Gerhard Munzer, Louis Munt, Lois Munt, Gittel Nelson, Nelson, Jenny Nigelis, Bill Oyer, Mine, Mine Plotka, Nathan Perlstein, Bert Quint, Eleanor Raffield, Mitchell Rapstein, Anne Rapstein, Abraham Rosen, Lillian Rossini, Bernard Salida, Norman Schulman, Darcy Schwartz, Joseph Siegel, Louis Salko, Bernard Spiller, Leonard Stein, Saul Zapp, Anne Tamber, Irving Trachtenberg, Sidney Wax, Sarah Weinberg. We have all these in our hearts and minds as we turn now to page 154 and render the Kaddish prayer in memory of all. It got dull, it got ash, it may rub on. Be on my brach, it would take, be on my mouth, it would take. The Chaye Kron, the Mime Kron, the Chaye, the Kol Beit Israel. Bahagala was none of her Rebim Ruhame. It ain't she rub on the rock, the alarm on the alarm. It for rock, be a stabach, be a kohar, be a kohar, be a nase. Be a kohar, be a levy, the hog, she may be a shark, be a hoop.
not to miss. <laughs>
in our country and throughout the world. And let us all say, Shabbat Shalom.